Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Lefebvre and today for our video on ways to fill your sketchbook, we're going to be painting some simple rolling hills. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so today we are back with another filling my sketchbook video. So I have my Etcher Lab Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook here. We did some strawberries and some water. And I've been playing around. Oh, we did feathers. I was just playing with some metallics. And then I did a demonstration of how to paint clovers on my Instagram if you want to check that out. Um, and then I painted this cute bunny for... Uh, my Patreon. So I'm just kind of filling this up as well. Um, I'm going to flip the page though, because today I want to do a simple kind of like a landscape, but I want to focus on rolling hills and how to kind of make them look a little bit, not necessarily realistic, but give them a bit of depth um, by doing a blending technique. So I found this picture on Pinterest. So a very simple photo of rolling hills just for um, a bit of a reference because I want to show you how we're going to be going about this. So there are so many layers to this landscape, right? You see all these rolling hills. But what I want you to take in is that the closer to the top of the hill um, it is, the lighter it is. So we're going to be working on doing a bunch of different little hills and working on a dark to light gradient within each hill to make it look like they're separated. So we wanna make it really, really simple. Um, so that's kind of like my reference. Maybe we'll add some trees, I don't know yet. Um, but this is also really relaxing and a great way to work on your blending skills um, as well as you know adding depth into your paintings and just overall fun with watercolor. So, I have my Etcher Lab Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook. I have a pencil and eraser if you want to mark out your hills first. And then for the paint today, I am going to be using my mini palette, my Christy Rice palette that I filled up with my Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors plus two um, metallics from MAB watercolors. Um, so these are my Cotman uh, student grade paints. Great for this. Um, and I think I'm going to be trying to use this more just so you know, we're not always using professional materials. And then for the brush, I am probably going to be wetting a large portion of the area with a, a larger flat brush and then mostly working with my size 10 round. Okay, so now let's get into this. So I'm just going to start by doing one kind of hill. I wonder if we should go all the way across. I'm going to do just half the page because maybe we can do, I can show you two different, um, versions or color schemes maybe. So actually let's go across and then I'll just save half for a painting later. And now all I want you to do is just kind of focus on a few hills like so. I am going to move that actually. No, because I'm going to do the, the top first. Sorry. Oh, and I did say I did want this all the way across. <laughs> really good at listening to my own words. Okay. Okay, so right now they just kind of look like lines going across. Yes, they're very light. I know that. Um, but you'll see them a bit more later. Actually, you know what? Let's do another one back here. Okay. Um, so first I just want to do the sky, which I'm going to do with a simple color. So I'm not going to be painting on this side. I'm just going to be painting on this side for now. So pick whatever color you'd like. If you want to do like a multicolor sky, you can. I'm just going to wet up my paper to start because I just find it's a little bit easier to lay color on it when it's wet. You get a little bit less streakiness when you do that too. So if you wanted to tape down the sides a bit, you can. But we're just filling this up, having fun. No pressure painting today, okay? And I'm just going to pick a blue. I can't remember which blue this is. I think it's like turquoise. I'm just going to do a simple blue and green kind of landscape today. Let's see what color this is. Yeah, this is like a, 
I already forget what I put in this palette. I think this blue, that's turquoise, and that is Windsor blue, which is a little bit warmer. It's not as cool as a turquoise. I'm just going to make it very light. Okay, and then these gradients you want to work on. In each section, you want the bottom of each hill to be darker and then slowly making it to a lighter edge. Ideally, you don't really want these pencil marks there because you just want that light edge um, beside the contrast of the next dark hill to be that defining point. Um, but if you need the, the guidelines for now, you can do that. I don't think I'm going to erase them. I might make them a little bit lighter, but don't worry too, too much about that. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm just kind of moving back and forth like so. Okay. So I'm just going to take my eraser. I know that's really, really light. And I'm just going to kind of just gently erase just a little bit. You don't, because you don't want it too, too dark. You don't want to see the pencil marks under there. All right. And let's just let this dry really quickly before we work on the hills. Okay. So now my sky is dry. It's a little streaky, but that's fine. Okay. I'm going to put my clip up here. This binder clip I got from Amazon. You can just look up rose gold binder clips and they're there. Okay. <clears throat> so now I want to work on one section at a time. Um, and you can use different greens or different colors for this if you like. So I have two greens in my palette. I have a sap green and a hooker's green dark. And usually, usually in landscapes, if you look at a lot of photography, the further away the land, the lighter in color it is, um, depending on the light of the photo. Um, but in a lot of them, you'll see the further away something is, the lighter it is, and the closer it is, the darker it is and more detailed. So I'm gonna try and do light greens closer to the back and then get darker and darker. So I wanna start with light green. So I'm gonna take little bit of yellow and then my sap green like so and here's my first little rolling hill so in this little section I want it to be darker and then slowly move to a lighter gradient so what I'm actually going to do the easiest way for me I find I'm going to put this on its side a bit just so it's a little bit easier to do I'm going to take my color I'm going to wash it off so it's a very very light wash like the lightest it would be closest to the tip of the hill so it's a very very light wash okay I'm going to take off some of that water just by tapping it on my paper towel okay if you find it's pooling too much okay just tap it on your paper towel I'll put this here and then I'm going to grab more of that color so I'm just going to grab a bit more green and I'm going to add the darker green closest to the bottom of that section and tap it and slowly let it blend up and if you want to make it a little bit darker just grab a bit more okay and then you want it lightest to the top. So I'm just going to tap that off a bit just to take off some of that color and just blend it out like that. Okay. And there's our first section. Then our second, you could even add even just like the tiniest bit of yellow to the top if you wanted. Okay. And then our second section, I want slightly darker, but because this is wet, I don't want to do it just yet because it will bleed into this section, this first section, and then you won't get that definition. Okay, so I'm actually gonna skip it and I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna make it a shade darker than I would this. So I'm gonna grab, you could even make it a different green if you wanted to. So I have my sap green here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of hooker's green, just make it a bit darker and I might even grab a little bit of red make it a little bit more like olive -y color. Okay, so I have my color there. I'm going to rinse off my brush because I want it to be a light wash to start. And I'm gonna apply it over the entire section. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm gonna start working on the bottom here, adding more color. So it goes from dark to light. So grabbing more of this color, placing it down here. Might need to mix a bit more if it's not dark enough. And just start kind of bringing it up. Might take a bit more of the hooker's green. Okay, and the key is blending. So see how you can see this kind of stripe of hooker's green? I'm going to tap my brush on my paper towel and then just kind of start bringing it up. And I tap it on the paper towel just so I don't bring up too, too much pigment where it's too dark up to the top. Because remember, we want it nice and light up at the top. Now I'm noticing that it's starting to dry up here and it's still wet down here. So I just washed off my brush, dried on my paper towel, and I'm just blending upward. Okay, it's still a little light for my liking, so I'm going to grab a bit more green, grab a bit more red, and continue making it darker here. And then just slowly bring it up. Now I actually don't want it too dark right here because that's still the top of the other hill. And if you wanted to add a little bit of yellow, just for like a little bit of a sun-kissed look at the top of the hill, you can always do that too. Okay, so we're working on blending here. And that's a tricky part, but it just takes practice. Okay, so again, I want to work on the next section, but I don't want it to be right next to this because I don't want them to bleed together. So I'm going to skip one and work down here. Now I want it to be a lot darker. So I'm going to grab some of my hooker's green, lighten it a bit. And this one, actually, you know what? I'm going to grab a little bit of purple and mix it with my hooker's green. And that makes it a darker green. So I'm just adding more water to make it a little bit lighter overall. Okay, so I do want it to be a bit lighter at the top. So if you need to like lift some you can or just make it darker towards the bottom. So I'm going to take some more poker green, a little bit more purple, dioxazine purple, and it makes this nice dark green. And again, if you're getting a line there, Wash off your brush, dry it on your paper towel, and make sure it's dry, not dry bone dry, but like there's no excess water because if you add the water there, it's going to push away the pigment. And then just gently, with like a gentle touch, you just blend it out. Now if it's still not too much of a gradient, which this one doesn't feel like it is, I'm going to wash off my brush, dry it, and I'm just going to try and lift up some color closest to the top here and then try and make the bottom here darker. Okay, so I do want that gradient. Wash off, dry. Gonna blend it out. Okay, so let's wait for those sections to dry and then we can do the in-between. And this is where you will see a lot more of the definition between the rolling hills. <clears throat> 
Okay, so now that that's dry, we can do the next one. So let's do this section, and we just want it slightly darker than this top one. So I'm going to grab my sap green. Again, starting lighter, because then we gradually want to make it darker. We want it the lightest towards the top. So see the contrast between the top of this hill and the bottom of this one? That's you, what you want to see, the difference. And then... It will be darker at the bottom here, which will be a contrast between the top of this hill. So I'm just filling it up to wet it. So it's light all over. And then I'm gonna start making it darker and this has to be darker than this hill. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my paper. It's just a little bit easier for me. So I'm laying in that darker color. It's still not dark enough. I'm just going to wash off my brush, blend it out a bit, and then try and make it even darker. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that hooker's green, a little bit of that purple. There we go. making it darker. Okay. Like that, and then washing off my brush, drying it a bit. And we gotta blend it out because we are getting a stark kind of defined line here. So just slowly bringing it up. Until it's lighter at the top. Okay. I'm going to grab a bit more. Maybe a bit of blue, I don't know. Cuz I do want it darker there. like so. And then see even this one, there's not enough contrast between the bottom of this hill and the top of this hill. So I'm going to have to go over that once this is dry again and make that darker in the background hill. So it's always best to start out lighter so you really get those contrasts. Okay, let's try another one. Trying to remember to make it nice and light at the top of the hill. And this bottom has to be darker than this top. Try to make it darker. And then wash off my brush, dry it and blend this darkness out. I'm 
like that. Okay, and then the one down here you want kind of the darkest. I'm going to try and add a little bit of maybe indigo with it. Or like paints gray, maybe to make it even darker. And then slowly make it lighter. Just wash off my brush, dry it, and kind of blend it out. So it's lighter at the top. Like that. So you always need it the lightest at the top of the hill. Now let's just fix this one. I just want to make sure this part's dry. Okay, and then just get a little bit more of the dark green here. And this just needs to be a little bit darker to make it kind of stand out a bit more. So wash and dry off my brush and then blend it out. Okay, and if you need to add more depth and darkness, to right above some of those areas to make them stand out even more. Just keep going. So like even here, this could be a little bit darker too. I feel like I should have gone a lot lighter with some of these, but it takes a lot of practice here. Cause see the contrast in the value is not, is not intense enough. So I'm going to grab more also I hate to admit it, I also haven't used my Cotman paints in a long time. They are a bit harder to use. So instead of wetting the area, I'm just going in while it's dry, laying down the dark color, then washing off my brush, drying it on my paper towel and blending out that edge. Okay, so it's a little bit darker. that okay and there we go that's kind of our exercise for today so you could do it um, with different colors you can make it like snow mounds so I think I'm gonna do that quickly and I can show you what it would look like if this was snow the thing with snow is obviously it's uh, a white base um, but with every white thing that you paint white object you paint it has some sort of undertone. So I'll probably be using a really light wash of Payne's Gray and I will just make it gradually fade into a white at the tips um, just to show you. So I'm gonna go do that and then I will show you what it looks like. But um, here, maybe I can just do one just to show you. So this is Payne's Gray, right? Yes. So I'm gonna take a really, really light wash. I'll do this one here, like really light. Okay, it's because I want it really light at the top of my snow hill and with when you're doing um, an object that's white you want to go a lot lighter with your paint than you think you need because it actually dries watercolor tends to dry lighter but when you're using like the smallest amount it actually tends to look a little darker than you would have thought you might think that you're using too much paint, but sometimes it's not enough. Okay, so I'm just going a little bit darker, like it's still pretty light, closest to the bottom here, and then just bringing it up. And then maybe just a bit more, especially right at that edge. I'm just going to blend it out like that. Then I'm going to wash and dry off my brush. I'm actually going to lift some of this up because you want it to be really light at the top of the hill. Okay, and fairly dark. You could always use blue if you wanted to make it snow. Up to you. Okay, so I'm going to finish this and I'll just come back and show you quickly 
what it looks like. Okay, so there we go. There's the finished ones. I mean, I feel like I should have used a bit more blue to make it look more like snow. The gray is not really giving off as much snow as as, as much it is as it is like stone, but you kind of get the idea. Um, but yeah, so you could always just fill up pages like this. You could add trees, you could add anything you like, um, snowflakes, anything. Uh, but yeah, so that's about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. See you guys again soon. Bye.